Hello everyone, my name is William Amzalag and I want to welcome you to our ninth episode of Jonas Longevity TV. Jonas, we are redefining youth. Obesity, or should I say, globesity. Today, obesity is a worldwide epidemic disease. There is an outrageous eruption of a worldwide obesity even in the countries where not so long ago, famine was the number one health issue. The fatness of the world is changing rapidly. And this is very disturbing because it's going out of proportion and nobody can get any control of this new epidemic. Many children become obese and then become obese adults. The diseases associated with obesity such as heart disease, cancer, and especially diabetes will explode. That will mean a lot of sick people all over the world. The cost in terms of death, diseases, and money spending is just astronomical. Think about today. There is in the world about 3 billion people overweight and 800 million real obese. The cost of obesity in the United States is about 150 billion per year, which is 10% of the total US medical cost. So what is the difference between overweight and obese? Overweight means that you gain only a few kilo above standard, from one to 15 kilo for adults. Above this threshold, you're considered as obese. If you wish to get more detailed information, then you have to calculate your BMI, which means your body mass index by using the following formula, your weight in kilo, divided by your height in square meters. If your BMI shows score under 18.5 per square meter, it means that you need to gain weight. You are underweight. If it is between 18.5 and 25, you are in normal standard. Between 25 and 30, you are overweight and above 30 you are qualified for obesity. Note that BMI is a standard tool which do not apply in extremes like very tall people or very small people and also should be adapted to children. Why people become obese? It is very simple in theory, but become more complicated when we reach fat metabolism. We are gaining weight or fat when we eat more than we spend in terms of calorie, or when we spend less than we eat in terms of calorie. So how do we get energy? The body will get energy only from the food, knowing that one gram of carbohydrate will release four calories, same for proteins, but one gram of fat will release nine calories. So all depend of how much you eat and what kind of food you eat. If the food is rich in fat or in protein or in sugars, now, how do we spend energy? There are three ways to spend energy. The first one is what we call basal metabolism, which is the necessary energy required 
to get our body working and all our million of chemical reaction working and working properly. This require approximately one calorie per kilo and per hour. So if you weight 60 kilo, you will spend in 24 hours, 60 multiplied by 24 equal 1,440 calories per day. And this is good news because you have no control on that. The sudden spending is the necessary energy to fight against heat or cold. And these depend on the environment and the way that you are protected against heat or cold. It is called thermogenesis. And again, you have little control on that. The third one is the energy required to move your body. And that is entirely up to you. This is to say that physical activity is the only controllable way to spend energy. We will see later that this very simple way of gaining or losing weight is influenced by many, many other factors and especially the control of fat metabolism by a sophisticated group of hormones. So why such epidemic? To understand, we have to go back 20,000 years ago. As surprising that it can be, our gene have not changed for the last 20,000 years. At this time, life for human was quite difficult. In fact, life was based on food availability and food was really available only during spring and summer. The rest of the time, no food, almost famine. Our genes has to adapt and to work in accordance with this alternance of abundance and famine and they create a kind of energy storage the fat cell was born. This cell has the capacity to storage all kinds of energy derived from fat, from carbohydrates, and even proteins. It can increase 50-fold its size and retain energy in the form of triglycerides. Because of uncertainty of food availability, our genes were oriented to wear the saving mode, which means that every time we eat, all the energy coming from the food was oriented in the storage facility. What happening or what happened 20,000 years later? Our genes are still oriented towards saving mode, but there is no more famine. On the contrary, the new society offers an extreme abundance of food rich in calorie and that all over the year. And guess what happened? Everything is going first in storage. And once in storage, it is very difficult to get out. You understand now why it is very difficult today not to gain weight or fat. But there is another factor. 20,000 years ago, in order to bring food at home, men were hunting, fishing, or climbing trees to get fruits. And that was a huge energy spending mode. Today, <laughs> with a new technology created for lifting heavy items or escalator or elevator, we reduce drastically our energy spending. You understand now why it is so easy to gain weight or fat. What are the consequences of obesity in terms of health and longevity? 
To make a long story short, it is a disaster. Being and staying obese will lead to a long list of chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, metabolic syndrome, and consequently a drastic shortening of life. That will not account for the uncomfortable physical, emotional, and mental consequences of being heavy for ourselves and for our relationship. In terms of aging, obesity is shortening telomeres, increasing DNA damage, and reducing stem cell pool. So what to do for reducing obesity? Obviously, it is quite difficult considering the worldwide effort of the medical community with so small results. Health authorities are repeatedly organizing campaign to inform people about the consequences of eating too much sugar or fat or the lack of exercise. But the food industry until now do not help and still putting on the market food rich in bad sugar and bad fat. The first step is to be convinced that improving your lifestyle, which means improving your nutrition, your physical activity, managing your stress and your emotion, in order to stop impulsive eating, will be a very good action to preserve your life and your longevity. The second step will be to use specific food supplement to help managing your fat metabolism and rebuild the muscles that you lose when lacking exercise. This is why Jeunesse decided to create a new line of product specially designed to counteract craving to help fat metabolism and to reduce muscle loss. Be with us in our next episode dedicated to the Zen body line. My name is William Amzalag and I will see you on our next episode. Thank you. Jeunesse, we are redefining youth.